Okay, good morning guys, um, hope you're all keeping well. So this morning we just want to look at, so the final uh, microorganisms then that we will look at are fungi. So like bacteria, there are good and there are bad fungi. So life on earth is dependent on, on fungi to a very, very high extent as well. So if we have a look here, so there are few, there are few back, fungi, for example, that cause minor health problems for humans. So we have some, so if we look here just at some of the examples that we have. So mushrooms are an example of fungi. So they're actually, they're visible to the naked eye um, and they would come under the category of fungi. Now other uh, fungi as well, you have yeast. Okay, it's not really visible under the naked eye. You'd have to kind of look at it under the microscope. You also have a uh, bread mold. For example, if you leave bread out and it goes moldy, you kind of see this horrible mold that starts to grow on it. That is actually a form of fungi as well. Now, fungi does cause um, disease as well in people. And a lot of the disease that it does cause is completely treatable. So if we think about things like um, athlete's foot, so here, this is an example of athlete's foot. Um, you can also get fungal foot infections as well. And they kind of, they just look horrible and they're, they're nasty looking, but they're nasty, they're generally very, very treatable as well uh, with antibiotics. And also as well, ringworm, for example, that you can get, that again will be a form of a fungal infection that you uh, can pick up. And it, but again, like most, uh, like a lot of, all of the fungi really, they, they, they are very, very treatable with antibiotics. Now, um, the fungi as well, they also, they provide powerful medicines. Uh, for example, medicines to control cholesterol, which are known as statins. And these things are called immunosuppressant medicines, which are used to prevent uh, transplant patients rejecting organs. For example, like if you've been a liver, a heart or a kidney transplant, a lot of the times what will happen is uh, when somebody else's liver or, or, or heart or kidney is, is transplanted into a person's body, uh, the body of the person receiving the transplant may actually reject it and see it as a foreign body or a foreign object. And in that case, what's going to happen is it, 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 the body's immune system will attack and try and destroy uh, the newly transplanted heart. And that's a major problem. And what we need or what's needed in order to help the body get used to the new heart or the new liver or the new kidney um, are what are called immunosuppressants. And as the name suggests, immunosuppressants, what they actually do is they suppress, they, um, so you have this, these immunosuppressants, they actually suppress the immune system and they just give the body a chance to get used to the new heart or the new heart kidney or, or whatever, the, whatever organ has been transplanted in. But again, these medicines are are produced by penicillins, or sorry, th these medicines are produced by fungi. Other um, antibiotics, so for example, pen a lot of the penicillins are all based on natural chemicals produced by fungi as well. So if you think about fungi, like why do they produce these antibiotics? Like fungi have to compete with bacteria and other fungi in for space and for food and for territory. So what they do is they actually engage in a kind of a chemical warfare with each other. And as a result of that, they produce these very potent antibiotics or antifungal to kill off their, their competition. But we humans, we can actually use, um, use these uh, chemicals that are produced by fungi and we can use them to treat, kill bacteria that would otherwise um, infect and kill us. And this whole area is what's known as biotechnology. So it's basically what we're doing is we're we're essentially using the technology of the fungi, for example, to kill human disease that is based on bacteria. Now, one important thing in relation to, to this. So we, we have this guy here. So he's Alexander Fleming and he discovered penicillin, uh, the first natural antibiotic back in 1928. Um, and again, that's that's their fungal based antibacterials antibacterials now in relation to antibiotics as well it's kind of a double-edged sword because overuse of antibiotics can lead to resistant forms of bacteria and these bacteria are known as superbugs so and these are major problems in hospitals so superbugs so for example 
MRSA. So these are resistant strains of bacteria. And um, like what happens is, like if you think about it in any kind of war, the fungi are trying to kill off the bacteria, but the bacteria start to evolve and start to become immune to the, the poisons that the fungi produce. And as a result of that, they build up immunity. But the same thing happens as well when we produce new antibiotics. Uh, there's strains of the bacteria that actually become resistant to it. And what ends up happening is you don't have any um, strains of antibiotics that will kill off the bacteria. So they actually grow and they multiply and we can't control them. And that's a major problem. Uh, and these are known as superbugs or MRSA resistant, um, MRSA or like resistant forms of bacteria yeah, that cannot be treated with modern or conventional um, antibiotics. So it's a major, it's a major problem. Um, okay, and then if we look at, so this, this is just something I wanted to talk a little bit about as well. So fungi, so life on Earth is dependent on the carbon and the nitrogen, so carbon and nitrogen being recycled. Now, if we think what is carbon and what is nitrogen, so carbon and nitrogen are just elements that are on the, the periodic table. So if we look here, if we think about us, okay, so we are actually made up of atoms and, it, and these are the atoms that make up the human. So if we have a look here, so carbon and nitrogen are two fundamental atoms that we use in order to build up our bodies, for example, and the same with other animals and plants as well. So carbon and nitrogen really form the basis or they're one of the major building blocks in relation to life on the planet. And what happens is um, these atoms of carbon, they get recycled around. So they may be part of us or they may be part of animals, for example, one day and then those animals die they are consumed by other animals and then the carbon that was in them becomes part of the carbon of a different animal's body, for example. And the recycling of carbon and nitrogen in particular is very, very important. And that's what we mean by the, the nitrogen and the carbon cycle. So if we have a look here, so there's nitrogen that's in the atmosphere. What happens is we can't actually, humans and animals, they don't really, they can't take nitrogen out of the air. So the majority of the air is made up of the element nitrogen. And nitrogen is like a key component that makes up um, parts of the cells that make up the bodies, make up bodies that, that, that animals inhabit. So this nitrogen has to get into, we have to be able to get it into our bodies and be able to use it. So how do we do that? Well, nitrogen is, plants are able to fix or take nitrogen out of the air, so they are, and they do this. There's bacteria that are used to fix nitrogen um, and they are able to enable the plant to take up nitrogen. And once the plant is able to take up the nitrogen, then animals eat the plants and then we can take up the nitrogen and then we can get it into our bodies as well that way. Um, so a major part of this whole process are bacteria, which we talked about, they're able to fix nitrogen or they're able to enable plants to take up nitrogen into their, into their bodies. Um, the other thing as well is that when plants break down, for example, um, and when animals die, what happens is bacteria, it acts, or fungi in particular, and also bacteria, they act as decomposers. So we have de decomposers. Okay, they're known as decomposers. And what they do is they break down. So if you have a look at, for example, this is the like the typical human body, but this will be the same for animals as well. This is what we're made up of. Now, and animals are made up of this as well. So if you think about when an animal dies, you have all of these nutrients, all of these elements that make up its body. Well, fungi, for example, they actually help nature to break down the body and to take all of these individual elements and put them back into the environment. So they help to break it down and put them back into the environment. And once they're put into the environment, they, in a sense, what happens is they're actually recycled. So they are, they're recycled and they're reused then by other plants and other animals. And this is possible because fungi break them down. Um, the same we have like, so that's the nitrogen cycle, for example. So it's the cycle that nitrogen goes through in order to be recycled. It goes from plants to animals to plants to animals, and it just keeps going around in this process. The same happens with carbon as well. So if we think about carbon, so we breathe out carbon, CO2, and it goes into the air, it's in the atmosphere. And um, what happens is then plants are able to take in CO2 in through their leaves, and then 
through the process of photosynthesis, they take that carbon and they turn it into food that they can use then to run their run their bodies. They also incorporate carbon into starch and that goes to make up the structure of the plant as well. But then what happens is plants break down and decay and what helps them to decay are organisms such as fungi. They actually um, break down they break down dead plants and they are they enable the the elements that make up the plants to be re reused or reuptaked by um, other animals, let's say within the um, within the environment. So that so that's what happens, and this is what's known as the carbon cycle. So it goes, it's a it's a process that just keeps recirculating this very very vital element, which is carbon. So it goes come, goes from the air into the plants, goes from the plants into the animals, goes from the animals into us, and then it gets recycled back around and it, it keeps being recycled and reused then by by different organisms. And again, like that's what fungi play a major role in that whole process. They are decomposers and they enable um, elements to be reused, let's say, within within the environment by different animals and different organisms, and they, they get recycled. So the next thing then that I just want to move on to in relation to fungi, so um, and bacteria in general or microorganisms. It's this whole area of food spoilage and preservation. Now, food spoilage is a massive problem, and what causes food spoilage are microorganisms, such as bacteria, such as fungi. They basically what they want to do is they want to get all of the elements that are in the food and use them themselves uh, to produce energy and to repair their bodies. So this is a major problem for it's a major problem for humans because we produce so much food and we cannot keep the food fresh and as a result of that we get loads of spool, spool, food spoilage. So food spoilage then like even if we look at this picture here so this is just a rotten apple for example and we can see that even on this we have all different types of microorganisms and what they, basically what the microorganisms are doing they are feeding and eating the food so they are and as a result of that food spoils and they produce waste and that's that's what we see that's the effects of food spoilage. So we have like mold and yeast, for example, can grow and live on apples. And this is kind of like what they look like if you were to look at them under the microscope. So it's a major problem. And um, if we just have a look here, so this is just a statistic. So in Ireland in 2018 to 2019, food waste by category. OK, so if we have a look at this figure here, so 6,312 tonnes of waste were produced um, by in Ireland within these years. So that's that's a huge, that's a staggering amount of waste being produced. And just to put like one ton into into perspective for you, like if you were to think about a truck, for example, an articulated truck, roughly they rate they weigh about a ton. If you take an orchid or a killer whale, again in roughly an adult killer whale or an orchid weighs about a ton and it's the same with an elephant as well so an adult well elephant would weigh up up and about one ton so imagine 6312 of those being produced that amount of waste every year it's a huge amount of waste being produced and like at the base of that or what causes food to break down and decay are microorganisms such as bacteria such as fungi uh, they're major, they basically, they decompose and they cause food to break down. Now, apart from food, apart from storing food properly, it is also very important to prepare it properly on clean surfaces as well. So when you're preparing food, again, it goes without saying, microorganisms are everywhere, bacteria are everywhere, they're part of us, uh, we have co-evolved with them. But Again, good hygiene standards and good cleaning standards, for example, within restaurants are very, very important in order to make sure that um, that food poisoning doesn't happen. Surfaces need to be cleaned properly after food is prepared on them. So that's a major one. So again, if you leave food out on a surface, what's going to happen is the microorganisms that are in the air, they're going to land on the food and then they're going to say, this is great. They have food. They'll start to multiply. When they start to multiply they will eat the food they'll produce waste and that waste that they produce can be harmful to us and um, hands should be washed before and after preparing food as well so that so again 
like there's no getting away from bacteria they're, um, fungi are everywhere and um, but we can keep them in under control by washing our hands for example and cleaning up after we prepare food so food poisoning is a very unpleasant illness so again food poisoning is where if you have a huge amount of bacteria gets into the body it produces waste and our body feels that waste and um, it's a poison to us and it makes us feel sick and it produces the symptoms of food poisoning um, okay, so then if we think about some of the ways then that we can preserve the preservation methods and, and what do we traditionally do? So a big one is if we think about a microorganism. Okay, so imagine you have this is your microorganism here. And basically like it's, it's a cell and what it wants to do is it wants to take in food. So it wants to take in food. Okay, when it takes in food, it produces waste. Um, and it also responds to temperature. Okay, so if it's if the temperature is really high, okay, that's going to break up the cell, and it's going to destroy it. Okay, if the temperature is really low, it's going to really really slow down the activities of the cell. So think about. Think about when it's freezing cold outside, you don't really want to do anything. You don't really want to move, you just want to stay warm. Well, it's the same with microorganisms as well. Microorganisms activity slows down as the temperature drops. So that's a major one. That's a big one in relation to helping us to preserve food. So if we can reduce, any way that we can reduce the uh, microorganisms activity, that will greatly enhance uh, food preservation it'll preserve the food because they're not going to be if they're too cold to eat they're not going to be breaking down the food if they're not breaking down the food then the food stays good for a longer period of time so some of the ways that we do that so refrigeration that's a major one that's why we have a fridge the temperature is too low for microorganisms to grow so again they want they need optimal temperatures to grow and if we can reduce down the temperatures below their optimal temperature then what will happen is they won't be able to grow and as a result of that if they don't grow they can't consume the food if they can't consume the food the food stays good for longer another one is so refrigeration is just you know storing it not you're not freezing it so freezing it is where you go right down below zero degrees celsius okay so freezing is below this so below zero, zero degrees celsius that's when we freeze the food so pickling so example, we can pickle different foods. So the acidity of the vinegar destroys microorganisms. So a big one as well, like when you pickle food, for example, you use vinegar and vinegar is very, very acidic. And essentially, like if you think about it, for example, in your stomach, you have when food goes in there, the acid breaks down the food. Okay, and it destroys it, but also what your stomach does as well, it acts as a natural barrier. It actually kills microorganisms as well that's on your food and it protects the body as well. So microorganisms do not like acid and as a result of that, acid will break it down. Now we can use that to our advantage as well. So right, for example, we can pickle food. Another one as well is the, what's known as salting and syrup. So the salt or sugar draws water out of microorganisms and they die as well. So we have this process, if you have, imagine you have a lot of water on one side, okay, and then here you have a lot of salt, so you just have dried salt. What's going to happen, there's a natural process that the water will move in and try and dilute the salt, okay, so it'll, the salt will naturally draw liquid into it. Now we can take advantage of this in relation to microorganisms. So imagine you have a piece of meat here like this. So this is your meat. Okay, and you have loads of salt on the meat. You salt it. When so you have your microorganism here, it lands on the meat. And what happens is if you think about like the cytoplasm. Cytoplasm is mainly water. And as a result of that, when if you have a fungi, it lands or a bacteria and it lands on a salted piece of meat, for example, what's going to happen is the liquid that's inside the cell of the bacteria is going to be drawn towards the salt and it's going to move out towards the salt. And what will happen is this will dehydrate 
the bacteria and it'll actually kill the bacteria as well. So microorganisms, they will die. So it'll draw and the same thing, the same thing happens. So this can be salt or it can also be sugar as well. Okay, so those two things will actually result in microorganisms dying because the water that makes up that's inside in their cells will actually be sucked out by the salt and it'll cause the microorganism to dehydrate and it'll cause them to die as well. And that's why, you know, the process of salting and syrup, for example, helps to preserve food. Drying then as well. So there's no water so the organism can survive. So again, again, we go back to what organisms need. They need water as well. Okay, and if it's like, imagine if you were to go out into a desert and try and survive in a desert for a long period of time, you're not going to be able to do it. And it's the same as well for microorganisms. They're going to die. If conditions are too dry, they will actually die. And that's that's the whole that's the whole um, reasoning behind, for example, drying as a way of preserving food. And then you have this other thing that's known as pasteurization. So the food, for example, milk or orange juice is heated to a high temperature in order to kill the microorganisms as well. So again, heating as well and pasteurizing, that just enables the, to create conditions that the microorganism doesn't want to that isn't good for the microorganism and it'll kill off the microorganism as well. So, th so these are some of the ways that we preserve food. So again, it's important to know the link between food spoilage and why it spoils. It spoils because we have microorganisms that are everywhere and they want to consume the food and break it down. And we have to try and combat that in order to be able to reduce uh, the amount of food that's being wasted. And also just to have be able to produce food and then preserve the food as well. Okay, so that's food spoilage and food preservation. Um, so what I want you to do then, I just want you to so have a read over these questions, answer the questions and just send them on to me via the chat option. So just write them down in your copy, take a picture and send it on to me. Um, that'd be great. Okay, so guys, hope you enjoyed that. Have a great weekend and we will talk to you all next week.